So we'll look at A part. A says this. So this is December 2021. Uh, first, explain the following terms as used in tradition. The term tax shifting. So let's explain that for two marks then. So you see, this refers to the transfer. This refers to the transfer. This refers to the transfer. This refers to the transfer of the tax burden. This refers to the transfer of the tax burden to another person. This refers to the transfer of the tax burden to another person through the revision of rights. Through the revision of rights. Through the revision of rights. Tax can be shifted forward. Tax can be shifted forward. Tax can be shifted forward. Backward. Backward or partly forward and backward. Or partly forward and backward. Or partly forward and backward. <coughs> EG. EG. VAT. VAT is imposed on suppliers. VAT is imposed on suppliers of goods and services. VAT is imposed on the suppliers of goods and services. But it is paid by the consumer. But it is paid by the consumer. <coughs> but it is paid by the consumer to increase in price. But it's paid by the consumer to increase in price. Then number two, we have tax set off. Tax set off. So you see, this refers, this refers, this refers to the deduction of taxes. This refers to the deductions, the deduction of taxes. That are paid, that are paid at the source, the deduction of taxes that are paid at the source to determine the tax pay. Set of taxes include set of taxes include. Set of taxes include withholding tax, withholding tax, withholding tax on cooperative dividends, withholding tax on dividends from a cooperative society, withholding tax on dividends from a cooperative society, withholding tax on dividends from a cooperative society. or tax deducted, or tax deducted on employment income, or tax deducted on employment income, 
for tax deducted on employment income, for tax deducted on employment income under the PE system. Under the PE system, under the PE system, when we look at what C, Shaka Enterprises deals in a wide variety of vertical groups. The transactions for the month of November 2021 are provided below November 2nd, purchase goods and credit for Mambo Enterprises, 960. November 3rd, imported goods worth 7,500 from Dubai, inclusive of custom duty free charges and VAT. November 4th, made cash sales of 140 pound to limited company in Rwanda. November 9th, each one 16 pounds as for the to have a certified public accountants. November 11th, <coughs> return good work 40,000 to Mambo Enterprises. November 12th, so good on credit to the Ministry of Sports, what 86,000. November 14, paid for electricity and water bills of 18,200 and 6,800 respectively. November 15, made credit sales to Mapato Enterprises of 560,000. 19, received 180,000 from the Ministry of Sports on account. 21st, Mapato Enterprises returned goods work 52,000 cleaning that was low quality. November 22nd, paid for restaurant services amounting to 64,500. November 25th, purchased goods work for 82,000 from Russia Enterprises and paid half of the amount by cash. November 27th, paid 132,000 to Motor Tech as repair costs on motor vehicles used in supplying water the goods, November 30th, made car sale of 728,000 to Nota. So transactions are stated, inclusive of VAT at the rate of 16% replicable, required VAT account for the month of November. So we prepare a VAT account for the month of November. So Shaka Enterprises. So all dates are from November, so we can put them in the so we can have November second. So what happens in November second? They purchase goods from Mambo. They purchase goods from Mambo Enterprises on credit. The value of goods is only 60,000. So VAT is 16 or 16. So you multiply. Then you can debit that. And we get 132, 132, 
that's November 2nd. Then November 3rd, imported goods worth 744,000 from Dubai, including, inclusive of customs, freight, and even VAT. So November 3rd, imported goods. The value of imported goods is seven forty four five and a half. It's inclusive of VAT. So again, we multiply. So seven forty four five and a half. Multiply by sixteen. Divide by one sixteen. And the value is one two. November 4, May Cassie, the one for T to reap a limited company in Rwanda. So those are exports to Rwanda. This is November 4. So those are exports. Exports to one exports are zero return. The output is just zero. November 9th, pay 16800 as audit fee to LRC. Uh, so, nine pay LR. CPAK is the word to us. Right. How many say they have audit? Audit fees. You paid for audit fees. They paid for audit fees for the 16th So on Then 11, return good worth 40 to Mambo Enterprise. So they had bought purchases on second, but then now they're returning the goods on 11. So you do the opposite, you do the opposite side, and you put Mambo Enterprise. These are parties and terms. Mambo Enterprises on the 11th. And the goods are worth 50,000. So they return goods. This is 5,000 from the returns. That's the 11th. 12. So, do you have credit to the Ministry of Sports? 12. Ministry of Sports. And 12. 386. Four. 
That's on 12. On 14, paid for electricity and water bills, 18, 20, and that respectively. So on 14, we pay for electricity. There is no VAT on water supply. Except if it is mineral water, bottled water, but electricity supply, metered water, either by the national government or county government, is not subject to VAT. <clears throat> so year 14, the margin, <coughs> then 15, net credit sales to my part of enterprises. Then on 15, 15. On fifteen, we have more partners. From a part of enterprises. For nineteen, you see the ninety thousand for the Ministry of Sports on account. You don't make any entry when you receive cash because the, only, the, the entry was already made when you sold it. Eh? So you don't enter again for VAT when cash is received. So there's no entry for 19. Then 21st, my part 20 enterprise retired group three, claiming that they were of low quality. So my part of how? Well, you reduce your goods, so you debit here. Yeah. Mapato Enterprises, the target group on 21st. So Mapato. These are called sales returns. You are claiming the goods are 40 on 21st, so 82,000. Claiming the mobility. So those are sales returns. 22nd, paid for restaurant services amounting to 64500 So they are items for which you cannot claim VAT. And I'll put a note on that. The items you cannot claim VAT. So VAT on catering and the style of service. VAT on catering and the style of services cannot be claimed as input tax. VAT on catering and the style of services. Is prohibited from cleaning. As in the tracks. 
that VAT is prohibited. So under VAT regulations, you cannot claim into tax on catering services. So again, and restaurant services, you ignore. November 22nd is ignored. November 25th, purchase goods worth 42,000 for Lucia Enterprises and paid half of the amount by cash. So on November 25th, uh, purchase for Lucia Enterprises. For eighty two thousand, we just capture the VAT regardless of how they were paid. How they were paid is not of essence. That's 25th. 27. Pay 132,000 to Motor Tech as repair costs on motor vehicles used in supplying water work. Yes. So 27. And pay for repairs. Motor vehicle repairs. That's 27. That is mid castle to Newton. Eh? To this castle. CB is, is cash. Sales to Newton Limited on cash basis. So then we need to balance this off, see which side is greater. So if the credit side is greater, we'll have VAT there. If the debit side is greater, then we'll have VAT return. So we need to balance all this and find out which side is more. So you can please put balance off the account and see whether you have VAT per or number.
So which one is more? Which side is great? The debit, isn't it? So this total is how much? Yeah, it's five thousand. Seven. Seven thirty-two. Seven thirty-two. Seven thirty-two. Why seven thirty-two? Ninety-two. Seven ninety-two. Point six. Point six. So this is three fifty-five. Seven ninety-two point six. So that gives us a refund. VAT refund tied down is out. The refund. One nineteen is three seventy nine, just like that. So that's the refund you claim for. Yeah, one nineteen, three seventy nine, 
is brought forward on December 1st, the following month. Bring forward that. Okay, when we look at uh, the next question, the next question is December 2021. We look at question four. December 2021, question four. We look at December 2021, question four. December 2021, question four. It says, explore the benefits of ETR. Electronic tax register, first of all to the trader and then to the revenue authority. So, what do you think are the benefits of the ETR machine to a trader? So December 2021, question 4A. So, benefits. Benefits. Oh, ETR. So what's your opinion? What would be the benefit of an ETR machine? To a trader who is installing, how would it benefit by installing this? So, well, an electronic tax register is, is installed at the cost of the trader and uh, it, it gives out fiscal receipts when they sell them. For example, you are, you are in an electronic shop, you key in the details of what is being bought, whether it's a flat screen TV or any electronic product or even mobile phones and then give out a cash or a fiscal receipt a fiscal receipt from the register or even if you are in the in the hotel industry and, and your your business is registered with VAT then you install this machine so that you be issuing out fiscal receipts uh, as you make sales any benefit to the trader for this kind of equipment? How will it benefit from an ETR? Yes? Sales. 
saves time. It saves time. It saves time. Uh -huh. It saves time. What else? What else? It's more efficient than manual records. Yeah? The fast efficiency. So, VAT records. It's also effective. Accurate records. Are kept on stock, on stock values. So the trader will know exactly what is left. So other than keep manual records, uh, this ETR machine is more accurate uh, in keeping records, so they know exactly what stocks they have left. Then there are also benefits to whom? There are also benefits to the revenue authority. We are going to look at benefits to the revenue authority. Benefits to the revenue authority of, of ETR. So, to the revenue authority, uh, you cannot erase. So, there are permanent trappers kept within the machine. So, the revenue authority is able to get the exact value of stocks or goods that were sold. You see, without the ETR, if it's manual records, you can change. You cannot change the, 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 the records. Eh? So they are uh, reliable. Reliable and accurate as well. Records. Reliable and accurate records of talks or goods. Then this reliable and accurate records will, will reduce tax evasion. So the, the objective is to reduce tax evasion. Minimized. Tax evasion by traders is minimized. Because of the accurate records. You see, manual records you can change, you can alter, you can manipulate, but for ETR, the records are kept. Then the following transaction we need to Mali Mwingu Limited, a VAT registered company for the month of September. So September 1 bought, bought for the match that's purchased in the previous month. 864.1 September had purchase goods valued, purchase goods valued merchandise at 185.600. 
for sold zero rated merchandise. So zero rated merchandise for 2015. So goods on credit to one and a half triggers for two hundred and eight thousand. Then six purchase merchandise from a trigger at one ninety thousand. This trader was not registered. For VAT purposes, seven merchandise work at seven one twenty was returned to the suppliers. Ninth merchandise sold on fourth September for fifty thousand was returned by customers. Eleven uh, catering for staff twenty two thousand. Twelve plant had purchased matter, merchandise. Who had purchased merchandise on fourth September was declared bankrupt before paying a balance. For 41,760 years from him. Okay. So merchandise work that at seven months twenty was returned to the suppliers. Nine merchandise sold on fourth September for fifty thousand. Okay. Eleven catering for staff. Twelve client work purchased merchandise was declared bankrupt. Fifteenth Omalo traders pay. 160,000 in part settlement of the views. 18 purchased motor vehicle fuel for 51 in 40. 22nd imported merchandise at a cost of 250,000. Import duty and excise duty were charged at 20% and 10% respectively. On top of the import price, 25th purchase market merchandise as follows from VAT, sorry, from suppliers registered for VAT, from suppliers not registered for VAT, 27 sold merchandise as follows to customers registered for VAT, <coughs> to customers not registered for VAT, 30 VAT paid on utilities, electricity, telephone. All transactions are put it as increased for VAT. 16% where applicable, required VAT account for the month of September, then comment on any information noticed. So you prepare a VAT account for the month of September. This is our assignment. That space is quite sufficient. Prepare the account for
So far, September. So all transactions are September. September 1st brought forward the merchandise purchased in the previous month. So in the VAT account, you don't bring forward stock. You can bring forward VAT refund. Remember the previous question when the refund, you can bring forward a refund of VAT, not merchandise, not stock. So September 1st, ignore. Third September, purchase goods value. Much of that is one eighty five six hundred. So, it's the pattern. So, everything is inclusive of EAT. So, our card is one eighty five six hundred. So, on third of September. On fourth of September, so zero rated merchandise. On fourth of September, we sold and this merchandise on zero rated. So zero rated merchandise, VAT zero. On fifth, sold goods on credit to one and a half traders. One and a half traders. On fifth. On a hard trades. Two weeks. So on a hard trades. Yes, we did it. We did it. Huh? Oh, it was a sale. Yeah, yeah, we don't do it. Uh, I'm mistaken. So you need to be part of it. Sorry, it's supposed to be a sale on our traders. That was fifth six purchased merchandise from a trader to ninety. This trader was not registered for VAT purposes. So if you make purchases from a person who is not registered, you cannot claim the VAT. Why? Because that person cannot give you uh, a tax. Invoice. So it's only registered persons who can issue a tax invoice, and you need a tax invoice as a supporting document when you're claiming when you're claiming VAT. When you're claiming input tax as a refund. Yeah? So when you're making claims for input tax, you need a tax invoice. A person who is not registered is not authorized to issue a tax invoice. The way it work out because it will not be supported. There will be no support documentation if the trader is not registered. So will not make entry for note number 
I mean for date six. The trader was not registered. Date seven. Merchandise 137 on Twitter was returned to the suppliers. Return to the suppliers. So these are parties returns. They were returned to the suppliers. So much of the lives. So we need to talk about party returns. So they return to the suppliers and the merchandise were at 27 or 20. So return merchandise. They have purchased the supplies that they returned. Please speak to me. That is uh, seven nine. Matter I sold on fourth September was returned by customers. So this merchandise sold on fourth was returned, but the effect on VAT will still be zero. Merchandise sold on fourth was returned. So fourth were exports. They sold zero rated merchandise uh, was returned for so nine. Um, it just says safe returns. But that merchandise is zero, zero return. You must record the belief it's zero, because there will be marks allocated for that. September 11, catering for staff 92,000. Now, this is, is different from restaurant and catering services. This is this is uh, this is cost incurred by within the company. Uh, maybe supplying the staff with food. This is different from the catering and restaurants we're talking about. This is not a a restaurant cost. Um, I think this one would be clear to them and say catering for staff. This is different from restaurant. So these were, were meals provided to staff. So the cost of meals to staff is 92000 So this is how much? Twelve six eighty. Six eighty nine. Six eighty nine. Point seven. Point seven. That is the eleven and twelve. A client who had purchased merchandise on fourth September was declared bankrupt before paying a balance of forty one seven hundred and sixty nine for me. So there's there's a client again who bought some of the goods that were zero rated. He was declared bankrupt. Again, it will not affect VAT, but we'll show the debit. Uh, so let's show the debit of this line 12, right? Data bad debt. Bad debt relief. We have claimed the VAT on the bad debt, but this VAT is still zero rated. A client who had bought on 4th September zero rated supplies 
Then on 15, 15th, one hour traders feed on 16 pack settlement for their dues. So you don't make any entry when you receive cash. One hour agreement, they need part payment. So when they make payment, you just debit the cash. There's no entry in the VAT account. You only enter the VAT account when you make the sale. You don't enter again when you receive cash. When cash is received, debit, cash, or credit, the supplier's account. Uh, so there's no entry on 15, on 18, purchased motor vehicle fuel for 51, E40. So 15, and we purchased fuel. So fuel is 8% to claim a rate fuel, 51. E40, but you use it for the one for it if it's in, inclusive. So, not mere eight percent. That E40 here. So, that is 18. 22nd, imported merchandise at a cost of 250,000. Input duty and excise duty were charged at 20% and 16% on top of the import price. Wow. So, imported goods cannot be inclusive or BAT unless the examiner tells you that. So, you just multiply by 16%, so 27. Second, imported goods. So they told you they've already included, they've already included duty, which they are supposed to. They've already charged input duty and excise duty. Import duty and excise duty were charged at twenty percent on top of the import price. When you come out of the charge, important is eh? that's why you've been given the rates. The one charge uh, did not be charge with those duties. Eh? Sasa, we charge you 250. Well done. Kwanza, we charge, we charge import duty. Import duty is at the rate of 20%. So, you want to include it inside here. So, you multiply by 120. You included inside, so to multiply by one twenty percent to include twenty percent inside the two fifty. Then you you're also going to include excise duty by multiplying by one ten percent. Then you multiply by sixteen percent the VAT. So one twenty percent is one point two. So two fifty will multiply by. 1.2, then you multiply by 1.1, when I include excise, then you multiply by 16%. So you get 52 times. The twenty fifth purchased merchandise as follows from suppliers registered is five to six hundred from suppliers not registered. So you cannot claim the purchases from suppliers that are not registered. So ignore that one. Uh, so on 25th of September, uh, matches. This is from registered suppliers only. Registered suppliers. Purchases from suppliers registered is 556. 
800. We multiply by 16 over 116. So we have 6 800. It supplies that are not registered, you cannot claim. They are 27. So merchandise as follows to customers registered for VAT, to customers not registered. Now, sales is very different. When you make a sale, you charge VAT to whoever is your customer, whether it's registered or not, it doesn't matter. You just charge them VAT. What, what changes is when you purchase. But when you sell, nothing changes. If you are a trader, you sell to anybody. But you make sure you charge VAT. So 27, uh, 27 sold merchandise. So these are sales. So they are sales to, to Registered customers. Well, it doesn't really matter. Since the registered customers, it's a poor 546. Those are purchases. 1165. And then you can do unregistered. Also to unregistered customers. So both will be charged VAT. So still doesn't matter. Then thirtieth VAT paid on utilities, electricity. The thirtieth we paid VAT on electricity. So VAT paid on electricity is the other six hundred. We multiply by 16 over 116. Then, as before, you will close this and see whichever side is more and determine whether there's a VAT pair or some.
So which side is more? The third side. So the total here is how much? Two seventy three. 520, 920. So VAT pairs are much. How much is VAT pair? Yes, thirty nine, seven eight. Point three. So next, I want us to look at. Uh, Classification, classification of supplies, classification of supplies for purposes of duty, classification of supplies. And you see the supplies of goods and services, the supplies of goods and services, the supplies of goods. 
goods and services. Uh, the supply of goods and services may be classified as A, may be classified as A, taxable supplies. So B, exempt supplies. The supplies of goods or services may be classified as taxable supplies or exempt supplies. Then continue, taxable supplies may be categorized further. Taxable supplies may be categorized further. Taxable supplies may be categorized further into taxable supplies may be uh, categorized further into standard rated supplies. Standard rated supplies. Uh -huh. Zero rated supplies. Taxable supplies will be further categorized into standard rated supplies and zero rated supplies. So we'll have our first abetting standard rated supplies. Standard rated So you say these are supplies of these are supplies of goods and services. These are supplies of goods and services. These are supplies of goods or services that are, are taxable at the standard rate of 16%. That are taxable at the standard rate of 16% that are taxable at the standard rate of 16%. And you see the value of standard duty supplies, the value of standard duty supplies, the value of standard rated supplies is taken into account. The value of standard rated supplies is taken into account the value of standard rated supplies is taken into account in determining, is taken into account in determining whether a, a person, in determining whether a person is required to register for the So the value of standard rated supplies is taken into account in determining whether a person is required to register for VAT. So we say the minimum turnover, the minimum turnover, the minimum turnover required for VAT registration, required for VAT registration is 5 million shillings is 5 million shillings per annum, is 5 million shillings per annum. And you say the VAT, the VAT, the VAT paid on supplies, the VAT paid on supplies or inputs or inputs that are standard rated. The VAT paid on inputs or supplies that are standard rated is claimable as input tax. Is claimable as input tax. Is claimable as input tax against the output tax. Against the output tax. Against the output tax. The next category we have zero rated supplies. So 
So you say these are supplies. These are supplies on which VAT is payable. These are supplies on which VAT is payable at the rate. These are supplies on which VAT is payable at the rate of zero percent. These are supplies on which VAT is payable at the rate of zero percent. However, however, the supplies are treated as taxable supplies. However, the supplies are treated as taxable supplies. However, the supplies are treated as taxable supplies. For VAT purposes, for VAT purposes, for VAT purposes, the VAT paid, the VAT paid, the VAT paid on zero rated purchases, the VAT paid on zero rated purchases is refundable. The VAT paid on zero rated purchases. Don't say refundable, say it's claimable. It's claimable against the output tax. It's claimable against the output tax. It's claimable against the output tax. Then you say a person making zero rated supplies. A person making zero rated supplies. A person making zero rated supplies must register. A person making zero rated supplies must register for VAT. A person making zero rated supplies must register for VAT. Next category, put exam supplies. Exam supplies. Exam supplies for the next category. Then you see these are supplies of goods or services. These are supplies of goods and services. These are supply of goods or services. That are exempted from VAT, that are exempted from VAT, that are exempted from VAT, that are exempted from VAT. A person making only, a person making only exam supplies, a person making only exam supplies. A person making only a ten supplies is not required to register. He is not required to register for VAT. A person making only a ten supplies is not required to register for VAT. Then you see the input tax paid. The input tax paid. The input tax paid on exam supplies. The input tax paid on exam supplies cannot be claimed against. Cannot be claimed against the output tax. Cannot be claimed against the output tax. The next we, we say something about the that. Input tax. When you say the input tax 
which can be deducted against the output tax, the input tax, which can be deducted against the output tax, the input tax, which can be deducted against the output tax, shall be a shall be a the whole of the input tax, 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 attributable to taxable supplies, the whole of the input tax, attributable to taxable supplies, and B, a proportion, a proportion of input tax, a proportion of input tax, a proportion of input tax, where only part, a proportion of input tax, where only part of the supplies, where only part of the supplies are taxable, when you say, where a person, where a person, where a person is making both taxable and exempt supplies, where a person is making both taxable and exempt supplies, when a person is making both taxable and exempt supplies, the deductible input tax is calculated The deductible input tax is calculated. The deductible input tax is calculated by a formula. The deductible input tax is calculated by a formula. Here is the formula. You see value of taxable supplies. We divide by value of total supplies. Multiply by the input tax total. So that VAT L. Or the final changes is going to be output tax minus deductible tax. Then we look at November 2020, November 2020, question two, November 2020, question two. 
We started doing the box A one public for months, which we are not doing. B says propose four factors that influence tax shifting in your country. So factors. Factors that influence tax shifting. Factors that influence tax shifting. And which factors are those? What factors influence tax shifting? That one, mm -hmm. yeah. Elasticities. Uh -huh. Did you discuss that shifting? Did we? Or we forgot it? Did we do classification of taxes? Uh, elasticities of demand and supply, nature of markets. So, the kind of market structure is it a uh, competitive market? For, for a competitive market, there are many buyers and many sellers. So it is there, the seller who is going to bear the bigger tax money in, in a competitive market. And for a monopolistic market, a market with one seller. A market with one seller will pass the whole tax to the, to the consumer. So it'll shift the whole tax value. Uh, the other factor is um, the income, okay? The income of the consumer is the income. Okay, I'll talk of government things. Government policy on pricing. So if the government has price control, the prices have been fixed, then there's no way taxes can be shifted to the consumer if the government has already fixed the price of the commodity, the tax cannot be shifted uh, whatsoever if the government uh, policy on tax shifting, uh, then in time, on the unique rate of tax. If the rate of tax is high, then most likely part of it can be shifted to the consumer, part of it the, the buyer can bear. But if the rate of tax is low, the buyer can, the seller may just absorb and may not shift it to the consumers. And then one more the nature of tax. So they are direct taxes. A direct tax cannot be shifted whatsoever. Indirect taxes like VAT can be shifted. So those are the factors that you could have more. 
economy. Economy. The, the rate of tax is what is the rate? If the rate is is high, then the the, the seller will feel it's too big to bear. So you want to share it. Eh? But if the rate is low, you may not want to you know cause a problem with the demand. So you may decide not to. Remember, tax shifting is too increasing. In price, so the rate of tax is not too high. The, the, the producer may not pass it. You may say, Well, I will bear it. But if it's too high, if the rate is high, then either he will shift it backward by negotiating prices with his suppliers, so that will be called backward tax shifting, or he may shift part of it to the consumer through an increase in price and make it bear. Then C says the following information was extracted from the records of Masters when Sailors Limited, a, a registered business for VAT purposes for the month of March. So we have sales at standard rate, we have sales at zero rate, we have exam sales, we have purchases at standard rate, purchases at zero rate, telephone 20% is private. Printing and stationary equipment, part of the business vehicles, repairs and maintenance for business vehicles, fuel for business vehicle regular premium, additional information. All the standard rate sales are shown above on credits. They were recorded on gross before accounting for discount. The company grants 5% discount to customers who settle within 10 days. But now for later payments, 80% of the customers take advantage of the discount. The debit notes exclusive of VAT were received from suppliers during the month as follows. Suppliers registered for VAT, suppliers not registered. A customer owing 95,990 from the month of February was declared bankrupt and a receiver manager appointed to manage the process. We found claims amounting to 25,000 that masters were sold as limited and made with the revenue authority two years prior were approved during the month of March. The input VAT in relation to exam supplies was negligible. All transactions are inclusive of VAT at the appropriate trade were applicable required for the month of March, compute for masters or sellers, input tax, output tax, VAT plan. So we're going to compute for master or the sailors. So I'm to look for input tax. Input tax is VAT on the table. So under this approach, we need some columns just to capture the information we want. So first of all, we need to state what type of a supply it is. So nature of supply or supplies. Then the value. Supplies value. <coughs> mm, they said transactions are inclusive of VAT as soon as so we leave space to calculate and get the VAT. Like that. So we are dealing with purchases. So we have purchases that stand on the The value of standard rate purchases is 14 to 6. The increase will be a TSO of 14, which is 6 to 14. Uh, 
and how much it would be to them. Two or five thousand. Now, purchases are at zero rate will not change anything. So, purchases are at zero rate you can put, but it will not change anything. It will, it will just add a zero there. Uh, sales at zero rate are important because for sales, you will get the value of supplies, this column. But for purchases, I want to get the total of VAT. So, if I put zero here, you can put, but it will not. Change much. Eh? Um, before I put these others, I want to look at additional information and see whether anything affects purchases at standard rate. For example, look at note two debit notes exclusive of VAT were received from suppliers during the month as follows suppliers registered, suppliers not registered. So suppliers not registered will not affect our competition. So debit note will increase the price. So debit notes received from suppliers. So we'll only pick suppliers registered for VAT 40. So our value will increase by 49 to my five, and the VAT will be 40. 925 multiplied by 16. Yes, it's the six. It's the six for the four. To six forty four, fifty six, and that's a very good. It, it increases the value of standard rate supplies. A customer owing ninety five nine ninety from the month of February was declared bankrupt, and a receiver manager appointed to manage the process. So. We have a bad debt. So bad debt can be claimed as part of the tax. We have bad debt. We call it bad debt. A customer owing to five. Nine hundred and ninety is declared one cut to five. For refund claims amounting to 25,000 that Masters or Sellers Limited have made in the revenue authorities two years prior were approved during the month. So they had already recorded the refund, just like we are recording this one. Budget to this year. They had already recorded earlier. So when they are paid, you don't need to record again. So when they receive the refund, they just take the amount to the bank account. So you don't need a recording from the four. In fact, the input VAT in relation to exam supplies will make it. Then you will get the other purchases from up there in the question like telephone. So in telephone. They are saying telephone 20% is private. So it means you are going to get only 
80% of the business uh, for the telephone. So 17,500. Um, now we shall get the proportion for B. It is near. What are you going to do the full value of R? Q17, 500. And then coming to gaming BT, it is similar to 17, 500 times 80%, times 16 over 116. Twenty-four thousand. Then, printing and stationery. Printing and stationery is two twenty-eight. Three seventy-five. Printing and stationery in your equipment. Patches of business behaviors. Three fifty six. Thank you. So for fear, use eight over one eight.
So if I leave the total equal times. Mm -hmm. That's our total input tax. Then you get output tax is one or two. We get in the same way. So for output tax, we look for sales, so we will start with standard retail. Standard retail supply, standard retail is The neutral says all the standard grid sales as shown above on credit were recorded gross before accounting for discount. The company wants five percent discount to customers who settle within ten days, but none for the payments for later payments. Eighty percent of the customers takes advantage of the discount, so we don't adjust for discount when it comes to VAT. We just use the supplies value without without discount, so there will be no entry for that one. So these are standard rigid supplies. Then I'm giving zero rigid supplies. Zero rigid supplies the one for triple. And here is zero percent. That gives us zero. Then we bring in exempt. The value of exempt supplies is plus five. No rates. So that the total of the tax is falling. Then the one three.
We've told you in node five, the input VAT in relation to exam supplies was negligible. Negligible means the exam supplies input tax was very, very insignificant. It cannot affect the computation. So we don't need to calculate the deductible input tax in this case. VAT, uh, careful. Come on, if they would not have put the statement that the VAT on, on exam supplies is negligible, we would have obtained a proportionate amount of input tax, but we cannot do that. That was on a seminar, you exam supplies VAT, I can mean, it's not significant. So VAT payable, which are for output tax. Output tax minus input tax. So output tax is 494 hours. Less input tax. Input tax is 778. These are fun. You refundable in But if the examiner would have not said that this is negligible, this is what we have done. We have calculated what we call deductible input tax. How we have said value of taxable supplies you divide by value of total supplies and you multiply by input tax. So what is value of taxable supplies? You come to this schedule of output tax. Right? Taxable supplies will be this These ones. You add standard rate plus zero rate. So you value a standard rate at zero rate, which are for 53, You add total now, you include the exam to get uh, 205. Uh, will be 55, 56, 500. Then you multiply by this amount, total amount of tax, 778, 164. What is the answer for that? Come my examiner hand the same one by exam supplies are eligible. That is what we could have done. So you value the opportunity now.
Asking the Chipatia seven forty nine. So nine point five seven two. As I use it to get that. So the sum of B and T can go or in front of it is out the top. Output tax value in the way of two four ninety four thousand. Is that to the link of tax of the seven forty nine? This is a nine point five seven two. So we find value four. So we find the two fifty five six hundred nine. Come on, the same one is insignificant. So, as an assignment for final November two thousand nine, we should see November two thousand nine. Thank you. 